Well, good morning, online family, and welcome to another Sunday service. So glad that you're joining us, joining us today. Um, and as we do every Sunday service, we'll begin exhorting you in the area of tithes and offerings. And I want to say this as we as we start that uh, God is causing a shift in the body of Christ, uh, a shift to where uh, the body of Christ is becoming more kingdom minded more kingdom minded. Jesus said that the kingdom is within us. So to be kingdom minded, another way of saying that is to be more spiritually minded. You and I uh, don't come to church. That's a term that's commonly used, but even more than a term, it's a concept that most people operate in. But it's time for us to make a shift and be more accurate in our knowledge and uh, be more biblical in our practices. And so you and I are the church. We don't come to church. We are the church. We are the body of Christ. And it's time for us to make that shift. Uh, God is building us into a spiritual house. Um, him building us into a spiritual house implies that we don't come to him like that. So us making the shift from being people who are carnally minded to people who are spiritually minded is progressive. It's a process. And God is causing us to make progress in that process. So as God builds you and I into a spiritual house, we have to cooperate with him in doing so. Amen. So uh, when you think about a house, a house is built on a foundation. A house is built on a foundation. So, uh, let's go to our familiar scripture here, 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. It says, as for the rich in this world, that's you and I, because, you know, if you live in this country, you have more than enough, more than what you need. Uh, it says, charge them or charge us not to be proud and arrogant or contemptuous of others, nor to set our hopes on uncertain riches, but on God. Again, it's time for you and I to be spiritually minded. And this is why God has to deal with our relationship with money. Uh, and that's the key. God, you see this in the case of the rich young ruler, God dealt with him, Jesus dealt with him uh, with regard to his relationship with money. And his relationship with money uh, was so ungodly that he chose to keep his possessions rather than to give his possessions, to sell his possessions and give to the poor at the command of Jesus. He chose to hold on to them, and he missed out on a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So the Lord Jesus Christ wants a relationship with you and I. If we're in relationship with him, he's going to deal with all of our other relationships, namely our relationship with money or how we relate to money. Uh, money, the love of money, is the root of all evil. And so, given the significant influence that money has in the earth, you know God has to deal with our relationship because he wants to be the one who's most influential in our lives. So anything that's influencing us, God is going to deal with. Amen. Uh, so, it goes on, but on God, put our hope on God, who richly and ceaselessly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Money can't provide you with everything. Uh, money can provide you with some things, but God can provide us with everything. Remember, you and I are spirits. We have a spiritual life. And uh, money can't do anything for our spiritual life other than us using it to lay a foundation for that spiritual life. Amen. So it says, charge them to do good, to be rich in good works, to be liberal, generous of heart, ready to share with others. In this way, laying up for themselves the riches that endure forever as a good foundation. Remember, God is building us into a spiritual house. Every building is built on a foundation. So we lay this foundation uh, in this way, in the way of giving. So in this way, laying up for themselves the riches that endure forever as a good foundation for the future. And here's where we need to focus in on. So that they may grasp 
that which is life indeed. Talking about eternal life. So giving, when we, when we, and remember, giving doesn't start until we, we return to God what belongs to him, the tithe. The tithe is holy, meaning that it belongs to God. So we first need to return the top 10% of our income to the storehouse. That's how we return it to God. We don't, uh, our money doesn't go up. But when we tithe, the odor of that action, that's the spiritual side of this transaction. That goes up before God and is pleasing to him. Anytime we give according to scripture or when we give according to the leading of the Holy Spirit, there's a spiritual odor. It's a sacrifice that God accepts and that he welcomes and it serves as a memorial before the throne of God. So giving is extremely important. Now, I want to look at one more scripture. I want to look at one more scripture. Um, the Bible talks about giving and receiving. So on the receiving side, we have to have our expectations in line with scripture. Um, we, ju we just saw in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 19, that when we give, we're laying up a good foundation. We're laying, the rich, laying up the riches that endure forever as a good foundation so that you and I can ultimately lay hold on eternal life. Eternal life is knowing the Father. Eternal life is knowing the Son by way of personal experience. That there's, there's no greater harvest than the internal harvest of eternal life. The harvest of you and I becoming better acquainted with our Father, us being better acquainted with our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, by way of personal experience. So let's turn to the Old Testament book of, of 1 Kings chapter 3. We're going to look at this account with Solomon. Look at this account with Solomon. Uh, we'll begin reading at verse 4. It says, The king went to Gibeon near Jerusalem, where stood the tabernacle and the bronze altar, to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. One thousand burnt offerings Solomon offered on, the alt on that altar. So you and I, uh, we have the opportunity to give an offering today. It says, In Gibeon the Lord appeared to Solomon. And Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon. God appearing to Solomon was in a, a direct response to him, his offering. And this is where our faith and expectation need to be. Every time we give, we should expect the Lord to appear to us. Now, I'm not talking about uh, visually, but I'm talking about us having an experience with the Lord that ultimately results in us gaining more knowledge of him. Uh, God, and we'll look at this today in the message, but God, more than anything, he wants our perception, our recognition, and our understanding of him to increase. We, we always talk about an ever-increasing experience with God and with every experience, it's God's desire to increase our perception of him, our recognition of him, and our understanding of him. That's eternal life. And as we get to know God better, we ultimately make progress in our transformation. So this is what this ministry is all about. Uh, we're always teaching uh, the different aspects of eternal life because that's what Jesus came to give us, his very life. Amen. And we're supposed to grow in the knowledge of him. And we're supposed to be transformed from one stage of glory to the next. And this is an ongoing process. It's a part of an ever-increasing experience that's going to last our entire lifetime on this earth. The good thing is that when we see the Lord, we'll be just like him. Amen. So, for those of you who are going to tithe today, this is your opportunity to do that. Uh, those of you who are going to give offerings, this is your opportunity to do that. On the giving side, give, give with a heart 
to bless someone else. When you sow into the ministry, give with a heart to bless someone else. When, you, when you're helping us financially, when you're helping us meet the, the expenses that accompany uh, this ministry, ultimately what you're helping us to do is advance the gospel. We're doing our part in the Great Commission. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. And so this is what this whole broadcast is about, preaching the gospel in the hope that somebody who hears it, who doesn't know the Lord, will come to know the Lord in his saving grace, will come to know the Lord and receive the gift of righteousness in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, God's ultimate goal is to bring many sons into glory. Amen. So we want to do our part in seeing God realize his dream. So on the giving side, give with that in mind. On the receiving side, yes, giving comes with the promise of, of natural and financial blessings. But over and above that, it's attached to the promise of eternal life. That's what we want. That's the main thing. So give with, with, the, with the expectation of God doing the same thing he did in the life of Solomon. Uh, when God appeared to Solomon, look what he said to him. Uh, verse 5, And Gibeon the Lord appeared to Solomon in the dream by night, and God said, Ask, what shall I give you? Solomon said, You have shown to your servant David, my father, great mercy and loving kindness. According as he walked before you in faithfulness, righteousness and uprightness of heart with you, and he, you have kept for him this great kindness and steadfast love that you have given him a son to sit on his throne this day. Now, O oh Lord, my God, you have made your servant king instead of David, my father, and I am but a lad in wisdom and experience. Know not how to, I know not how to go out, begin or come in and finish. In reality, we don't either. In reality, uh, we are, you know, we, we, in reality, we don't know what we should know. We need the knowledge of God. We need the wisdom of God. And Solomon, in his youth, was, was humble enough to understand that. Uh, so he says, Now, O Lord, my God, you have made your servant king instead of David, my father. I am but a lad in wisdom and experience. So are we. And I know not how to go out, uh, begin, or come in, finish. Your servant is in the midst of your people, whom you have chosen, a great people who cannot be counted for multitude. So give your servant an understanding mind and a hearing heart to judge your people, uh, that I might discern between good and bad, for who is able to judge and rule this your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. Now watch, God said to him, because you have asked this and have not asked for long life or for riches, nor for the lives of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to recognize what is just and right. Behold, I have done as you asked. I have given you a wise and discerning mind so that no one before you was your equal, nor shall any arise after you, you equal, excuse me, arise after you, equal to you. I have also given you what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings equal to you all your days. And if you will go my way, keep my statutes and commandments, as your father David did, I then will lengthen your days. So when we give with the right attitude, we give in a, in a spirit of humility, um, in a spirit of expecting God to show up and visit with us, he'll do more than what we ask for. So having said that, give, give and govern yourselves accordingly. Uh, remember, we, we emphasize the principle of ministry partnership supporting the teacher financially, the uh, promise of God attached to that principle is that God will supply all you need according to his riches and glory 
by Christ Jesus. Lastly, this being Sunday, we have the glory seed, which is an over and above offering. If you give that offering, give with the expectation of God making all grace, which is every favor and earthly blessing, abound towards you in abundance, putting you in a position where you uh, have all sufficiency in everything. And then God will continue to supply you seed to sow so that you can continue to abound in every good work and charitable donation. So for you, our, on, on our online family, we have two options for you. Uh, number one, you can go to vinelifechristianfellowship.com and do your giving online. And then the second option, for those of you who prefer to mail in your tithes and offerings, you'll find our address at the bottom of your screen in the description box. So I want to thank you once again. Expect God to visit with you. Expect God to manifest himself to you in a way that's going to increase your knowledge and understanding of him. It's going to cause you to experience a greater perception of him, a greater awareness and recognition and understanding of him. Amen. So let's go ahead and get started with today's message. Uh, we'll make our confession of faith and then we'll begin. Repeat after me. I'm God's heir. I'm a joint heir with Jesus. I'm one spirit with the Lord. All the promises of God are mine and I receive all the promises of God by faith. Amen. Now, um, let's begin. Let's begin with this very important scripture. Uh, 2 Corinthians 13. You know, and our pastor uses this scripture a lot because, because of its significance. And um, so let's look at it. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. It says, examine, test, and evaluate your own selves to see whether you are holding to your faith and showing the proper fruits of it. This scripture, this por portion of the scripture reminds me of Jesus in um, the book of John, chapter, I believe chapter 15, where he's talking about us abiding in him, us living in him. And the result of that would be us producing much fruit or living a life that's evident of Christ in us. All of you and I are supposed to be producing evidence of the life of Christ. That's what fruit is. You can say fruit, you can say evidence or proof. But our lives are, are supposed to be full of proof uh, that Christ lives in us and that Christ, Jesus, is Lord. And the, one of the reasons God wants, to, wants us to bear fruit, if you think about our natural tree, a natural tree uh, bears fruit so that people can pick the fruit and then enjoy and benefit from it. And we're supposed to be trees of righteousness bearing fruit where the world can see. They can literally see the fruit that we bear and be attracted and drawn to the Lord Jesus Christ as a result of, of seeing us, as a result of interacting with us. But that, that fruit, us bearing fruit, is based on us abiding in the Lord. So we need to examine and test and evaluate our own self to see whether or not we are holding to our faith and showing the proper fruits of it. It goes on to say, test and prove yourselves, not Christ. Um, a lot of times we, we test Christ. When things don't work out the way we expect it, the, the fleshly tendency is to say, you know, well, God, you know, what is it? Uh, we, we, we look at God as opposed to looking at ourselves. The Bible tells us to test and examine and evaluate our own selves, not Christ. Amen. It's never, the, the problem is never with God. Uh, God is perfect. We, we are imperfect. So it says, do you not yourselves, and here's what, here's what we need to focus in on, realize and know, Realize and know how thoroughly by an ever-increasing experience. 
that Jesus Christ is in you. Now, let's say this on the count of three. Ever increasing experience. One, two, three. Ever increasing experience. God wants us to experience him personally. God wants us to experience him personally so that you and I can realize and know thoroughly by that, by that experience that Christ is really in us. Amen. Now, to, to get a little bit more understanding, let's go to another scripture. Let's look at Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. God wants us to wants to give us an experience. God wants us to experience him personally so that we can we can experience the result of experiencing him personally, which is us realizing and knowing thoroughly that he Christ is really in us. Amen. Luke chapter 17, verse 20. And it reads, Asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he replied to them by saying, The kingdom of God does not come with signs to be observed or with visible display. Nor will people say, Look, here it is, or see, there, see it is there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you, in your hearts, or in your spirit, among you, surrounding you. When he says in verse 21, he says, For behold, the kingdom of God is within you, in your hearts. Now, when he says that, let's think about that in a, in a practical and logical way. The kingdom of God is within us. Anything in our spirit is beyond, it is beyond our natural perception. Anything that's in our spirit or in the spirit realm is beyond our human or our natural perception. The kingdom of God is real. It's a reality. Otherwise, Jesus wouldn't be talking about it. But it's a spiritual reality. Given that it's a spiritual reality, it's beyond our human perception. So anything beyond our, our human perception, we need God's help in order to realize it. In order, when, I, when that, that word realize means to become aware of. That word realize uh, talks about us having the ability to perceive. Amen. I want to use that word uh, aware today. Our awareness. It is so important that the Holy Spirit creates spiritual awareness in our lives. If he doesn't, if we don't receive the ability, or if the Lord, another way of saying that, if the Lord doesn't awaken us, when you think about being awake, when you wake up in the morning and you open your eyes, the opening of your eyes gives you an awareness. And when you have an awareness, you can operate in this natural realm. You and I are operating in this natural realm uh, primarily because we have an awareness of it. We have an awareness of it. And, uh, you know, it, it's the language used in the Bible. Uh, like the term, born again. You and I, who have received Christ, were born again. That word born. When a child is born, uh, when a child comes out of the womb of their mother, when we came out of our mother's womb, uh, the doctor spanked us to wake us up. And at some point, our eyes opened, and we could see this natural realm. And over time, 
Based on our awareness, we learn how to operate in this natural realm. In this natural realm. The same thing, uh, the same concept is true as it relates to our spiritual life. Amen. The Bible talks about us being awake to righteousness. But when you think about that word, awake, you don't wake yourself up. The Bible says that God wakens us up morning by morning. He awakens our ear to hear as a disciple, hear as the Lord or one who was taught. So God wants to wake us up or give us a spiritual awareness so that we can start operating based on spiritual realities. Amen. So the kingdom of God is within us. Turn over to Colossians chapter 1. We need to become more kingdom minded or more spiritually minded. To be spiritually, to be spiritually minded is based on, first and foremost, us having a spiritual awareness. You, you can't be mindful of something without being aware of it. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. So we see Jesus saying in Luke 17 that the kingdom of God is within us. Colossians 1, 13. This is the Apostle Paul. He says the Father has delivered and drawn us to himself out of the control and the dominion or the domain of darkness and has transferred us into the kingdom or the, or the uh, domain of the king the kingdom of the Son of his love, the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, uh, let's turn over to Colossians. Let's go down to verse 27. Let's go down to verse 27. It says, To whom God was pleased to make known how great for the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ within and among you. So the kingdom is, is within us. Christ is within us. Now if we think about it, the kingdom is the king's domain. Christ is the king. He's the king of kings. He's the lord of lords. So wherever Christ is, his dominion is. Most, a natural king is a kingdom over a certain domain. But Jesus is the king of kings. He's the creator of all things. So his domain is everywhere. Christ dominates and has dominion over everything and over everyone. But that same king is living on the inside of us. Therefore, his domain is on the inside of us. Now, given that the king lives on the inside of us, and given that his domain lives on the inside of us, it's obvious that he wants us to be aware of him and his domain because you and I have been transferred into that domain. Why? Because we're in him. Christ is in us and we're in him. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse chapter 6 verse 17 says that he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. So his spirit is within, within us, and based on his spirit being in us and being one with, with us, we're in him. So wherever he is, we are also, spiritually speaking. Amen. Christ in us is a spiritual reality. And again, since that's a spiritual reality, we need his assistance in order to perceive it, in order to to have an awareness of Christ in us. And, and God wants that to happen. Which brings me back to 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Let's look at that once again. Let's look at that scripture once again. 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5. Obviously, Christ living in us, the kingdom in, is, is on the inside of us. So, it's apparent that, and it's more than apparent, it's obvious that, that the Lord 
wants us to have an awareness of him in us. And he wants us to have an awareness of the kingdom in us because that awareness will enable you and I to walk in the reality of Christ and walk in the reality of the kingdom. Amen. So how does that take place? How do we receive that awareness? How does God awaken us to these spiritual realities? Beginning uh, in verse 5, examine and test and evaluate your own selves to see whether you are holding to your faith and showing the proper fruits of it. Test and evaluate, test and prove yourselves, not Christ. Do you not yourselves realize and know? So to realize means to have an awareness of and know thoroughly by an ever-increasing experience. Again, God brings about awareness, spiritual awareness, by way of us experiencing him personally. This is why we've been teaching what God is doing in, the, in this last hour. God has drawn us unto himself. He's drawn us into his presence so that we can experience him. And as we experience him, our awareness of him, our awareness of the kingdom begins to grow and increase. Amen. Let's look at uh, Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. There's no way around you and I coming into the presence of God. There, there's no way around us coming to God. There's no way around that. We have to realize Jesus died and shed his blood for that purpose. Over and above you and I going to heaven, Jesus died to give us free access into the presence of God so we can experience God, so we can get to know God, so that we can get to know Jesus, so that we can get to know the Holy Spirit personally. When the Bible talks about knowing God, it's always talking about knowing God by way of experience. One of the most significant scriptures in the Bible is in the book of Hosea, chapter 4, and it talks about the, the controversy that God has with his people. And even though that's an Old Testament book, that word is still proceeding from the throne of God. God is still expressing that sentiment because God created us for fellowship. And when we're not in fellowship with him, he has a controversy with that. He has a contention with that. He's contending with our unwillingness to fellowship with him. God loves us and he's drawing us unto himself so that you and I can experience him personally. So that you and I can get to know him by way of experience. And that experience creates awareness. That experience brings about a realization of his person. That experience brings about a realization of the kingdom of God. The, 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 the realm of God, the domain of the Lord Jesus Christ, which you and I have been translated into. Why? Because, or re, really, the correct word is how. We're in Christ. Amen. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. This will be the last scripture because we're running out of time. The Apostle Paul says in verse 10, Philippians 3, for my determined purpose is that I may know him, that I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him. Now that, that progressive acquaintance happens this way. Perceiving, recognizing, and understanding the wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly. What he's talking about. He's talking about the effect or the result of that ever-increasing experience. You can't experience God 
without developing a greater level of perception of his person. You can't experience God without experiencing uh, an in, uh, without experiencing an increased ability to recognize him. You can't experience God without uh, an increase of understanding him. And so our line is supposed to be centered around fellowship with God. As we fellowship with God, our perception, our recognition, our awareness of him grows. As our awareness of him grows, simultaneously our awareness of his domain grows. And we begin to walk in the reality of it in ever increasing degrees. In these last days, we have to be people who show proof of the God we serve. Amen. We all want to see him, we all want to see uh, God manifest himself to us. And he wants to do that. But he wants to take it further and begin to manifest himself through us so that the world can come to know him as they experience his body in the earth. In order for that to take place, you and I have to become more kingdom-minded, more Christ-in-me-minded. You and I, up to this point, the body of Christ, uh, up to this point, the majority of the body of Christ, we've been waiting for God to do something as opposed to coming to God getting to know him and experiencing him. And through that experience, we, can, we, we begin to recognize and be aware of and perceive what he's already done on the inside of that and manifest that reality in and through our lives. So again, this shift is taking place. We have to yield with what, what God is doing and focus our lives on spending time getting to know him. Focus our lives and, 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 and center our lives around his presence so that through an ever-increasing experience, our perception, our recognition, and our understanding of him will be on a continual increase. Amen? As that happens, our transformation will progress and we'll, as that transformation progresses, the proof will be able to produce, bear fruit, and proof that our God is the true and living God. Amen. So we've run out of time. So I want to thank you again for tuning in. Uh, make it your priority to fellowship with God. This whole concept of coming to church, you know, we need to, we need to get away from that. That doesn't mean we don't assemble ourselves together. But we have to do this with understanding. We are the body of Christ. And again, it, go, it, it really goes back to awareness. The reason people come to church and don't come to him is because they're not aware of him. Again, Christ in us, that's a spiritual reality. Therefore, you and I need his ability to perceive and to, and to be aware of that spiritual reality. Once you're aware that Jesus lives in you, once you're aware of him, you won't ignore him. Once you're aware of him, you'll come to him. You won't just come to church. Amen? So, having said that, we're in the service just let me remind you of uh, our service times. Our main service is on Sunday at 9.15. And then we have Bible study every Tuesday at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. You, our online family, you're always welcome to join us in person. And that's what needs to happen in these last days. It's, it's about getting back to uh, fellowshipping with one another, assembling ourselves together as we see the day approaching. Amen. So God bless you and enjoy your week. For more information on Vine Life Christian Fellowship, please visit our website at www.
www.vinelifechristianfellowship.com. Options concerning the tithe, offerings, partnership, or favor challenge are located in the description box below. It is our hope that you have been blessed and enlightened by this message. As we begin our online journey, we encourage you to subscribe to this channel, ensuring that you will not miss future messages. On behalf of Vine Life Christian Fellowship, we would like to thank you for joining us. Have a blessed day, and we will see you next time.